Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we're reading the Brihad Bhagavat Amrita, which is written by Srila Sanatana Goswami. And he's telling us in this first section of the Brihad Bhagavat Amrita, the two sections, the first section is about Narada Muni and his search for the devotee who has received the greatest mercy from the Lord. So Narada Muni's search began at Prayag in the month of Magh, when he saw Brahmana worshipping Shalagram Shila and then doing uh, a lot of uh, seva for all living entities. He was distributing food and clothing and he was showing all kinds of respect for all different living entities. And Narada Muni considered that this Brahmana, he must be very great, he must have received the greatest mercy from Lord Krishna. And Narada Muni approached him, but the Brahmana said, no, 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 not me. He said, I, I don't have much opulence. He said, you go to the south, in the kingdom, in the south, there's a king there who's very opulent and he's a great devotee and every day in his kingdom is a festival i only come to prayag once in a year and do this yagya but this king every day in his kingdom is having a festival and everybody's taken care of everyone's fed sumptuous prasadam and the temples are beautiful and the deities are worshipped in the most wonderful manner to the highest standard. He said, this king is really a great devotee. You should, you should go there. So Narada Muni went to see the king <clears throat> and he praised the king because he saw the kingdom was even more opulent than what the Brahman had told him. So Narada was really impressed. He saw everyone was very blissful. So Narada Muni was glorifying the king that you've received the greatest mercy from the Lord. But the king he said, no, 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 not me. He said, uh, you think I'm very charitable and very opulent? He said, no, no. He said, I live in fear. I live in fear of other kings coming and uh, attacking my kingdom. I live in fear of death. I have a short life. I live on this earthly planet. We all have a short life. And I don't really have much opulence. My kingdom is not very big. You want to see real opulence? You go, and, you go to heaven. Go to Swarga Loka and go to heaven and see the opulence there. And when you go there, you'll see that the king of heaven is Indra. And he's really powerful. And all the other devas are under his control. They all take, they take instruction from Indra. And he has a long life and he enjoys uh, opulence and he's in charge of the rain. He's the god of rain. And rain is a very important thing. You get too much rain, it floods everything. And if there's not enough rain, it's also a problem. So Indra has that responsibility to make sure there's proper distribution of rain. So he's really a great personality. He's very magnanimous, very charitable. So Narada Muni went, thought, I'll go to heaven and go and see Indra. So Narada Muni went up to Swargaloka because Narada Muni, he's the eternal spaceman. You see, he's a, a great yogi, he has yoga cities, and he can travel anywhere. He can even go to the spiritual world. 
And we will hear also how he goes there. But first, he's going to heaven and he's going to see Indra. And so he came to Indra and he was glorifying Indra that you have received the greatest mercy from the Lord. You are the most fortunate. You are the greatest devotee. And Indra, is, Indra was looking at Narada Muni. What? What are you saying? Me? You must be joking. And Indra began to uh, tell Narada Muni different things which happened, which are an indication that Indra didn't really get the greatest favor from the Lord. And he, told, he tells uh, Narada Muni, for example, he said, the cowherd men of Vrindavan, every year they were worshipping me. They were doing an Indra Yagya for me. But Krishna came there and he stopped it all. Then he got them to worship the cows in the Govardhan Hill. So, he didn't have, didn't have any real care for me. He didn't worry, didn't care about me. And you know what else he did? He came here to the heavenly planets and he took the Sudharma assembly hall and he took the Parijata flower. Not just the Parijata flower, he took a whole tree of Parijata. You say he cares about me. You say Lord Krishna cares about me. He cares more about the people of Dwarka than he cares about me. He brought the Parijata tree down to Dwarka and he gave it to his, his queen, Satyabhama. And then he took also the Siddharma assembly hall. Now those, those two items, they were the property of the demigods. The Sudharma assembly hall and the Parijata tree, they were only meant to be in heaven. But Lord, but this, this uh, Lord, the Lord in the form of Lord Krishna, he took them away and took them down to earth. He took them down to earth and that the, the earth is, you know, it's not an important planet. It's uh, just in the middle of the universe. And people die there easily. They have short lives. But he took the Parijata tree and he took the Siddharma assembly hall down there. So where does he have any feeling for me? He doesn't have much feeling for me. So this way, uh, Indra was telling... Uh, Narada Muni, like this, uh, it says, uh, oh, he, 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 uh, he, uh, you know, I, we wanted him to help us to get back the heavenly planets from the demons. When Bali had come there, Bali Maharaj had come there with his army of demons and they defeated us and took control of the heavenly planets. And so he was supposed to help us get back the heavenly planets, but he didn't fight him in a fair way. He just tricked him. He tricked Bali Maharaj. He got Bali Maharaj to agree to give him three steps of land. And then he took away the whole universe and gave it back. So he, he got back the heavenly planets for us, but he did it in such a tricky way. You know, he, he, it's not like he did it with a, a lot of respect for us, to win us a lot of respect. And, and then my mother and father, Indra's mother and father means Kashyapa and Aditi. They had worshipped him for a long time. They worshipped him because they wanted the, the Lord that he should come as their son. 
but they had to worship him for a long time before he responded. And then only, he didn't come in his original form, but he came in an expansion of his original form. He came in the form of a dwarf Brahmana, it's Vamana Dev. He didn't come in his original form as he appeared on earth. When he appears in Dwarka and Vrindavan, he has his original form. But in the heavenly planets, he didn't come in that form. So you can see, you're saying that he cares so much about us, but look at how he dealt with us. Hmm. And then he, he also, he destroyed the Kandava forest. He burned down my favorite forest, the Kandava forest, right? This is uh, Agni, the god of fire, had indigestion. <laughs> and so he wanted, he thought the best way to cure his indigestion was if he could devour the Kandava forest, because in the Gandava forest, there were many different herbs growing there. And they would, they would be good for his indigestion. And Lord Krishna allowed him to do that. He burned the whole Gandava forest. And Indra said, that was my favorite forest. And Indra was, of course, pouring rain there onto the Gandava forest. So this, this was another reason, another thing which uh, Krishna did, which Indra didn't like. So it shows that Krishna really doesn't care about Indra very much. Although Indra is the elder brother, is the elder brother of uh, Vamana Dev. And then Indra also, had to kill Vritasura and then he another thing Krishna did was he destroyed the capital of Indra, Amaravati, and he built a new residence above all others for himself. This is a pastime described in the eighth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, Krishna destroyed Indra's kingdom and then he built a new king. He made a new place for himself. He came in, the, in another incarnation. He came as Vaikuntha. Vaikuntha was an incarnation of the Lord. And it's described in the eighth canto how this personality, Vaikuntha, established another, arranged that there would be another planet, a spiritual planet within the universe. And you may be surprised there could be a spiritual planet in the universe. But it was, it, it appears at the time when Vaikuntha, this Vaikuntha, personality appeared. Before that, it was always there, but it was hidden. They couldn't see it, they didn't see it. But with the appearance of Vaikuntha, then this planet appeared, became visible to everyone. But it was always there. It was just that sometimes they couldn't he they couldn't see it. So this is the nature of the a spiritual planet within the universe, just like uh, Dhruva Maharaj, Dhruva Loka, like that. And also Sweta Dweep. Sweta Dweep is also in, within the, it's never annihilated. What happens to them at the time of the end of Brahma's life? They just become unmanifest. And then when another Brahma takes birth, then they manifest again. But they're spiritual planets within the material world. Oh. Then Indra goes on, he said, he accepts our worship on the strength of our parents' devotion. 
and at the insistence of my priest. And then, after taking our offerings, he disappears and returns to his own abode. <laughs> so Indra is saying, he doesn't accept the offerings from me. He only accepts them because of my parents, because my parents were very devoted. So because of them, he accepts the offering because of my guru also, priest. Priest means Brihaspati, because Brihaspati is a devotee and Kashyapa and Aditi are devotees. So because of that, the Lord, Vamanadev, accepts their offering. But as soon as he makes the offering, he'll take the offering and go and disappear. He doesn't just stay around to be with Indra all the time. He disappears, he goes off. And so Indra says, you know, he doesn't care for me, he doesn't like my, doesn't want to be with me. I don't know where he goes, he even just disappears. So it's, uh, so, so this, this point answers the question. It answers the point about the Southern King. The Southern King had described that Lord Vishnu accepts in person the elaborate offerings Indra makes to him. Well, like the southern king, he was telling Narada Muni, you should go to the heavenly planets and see Indra. The Lord is there. The Lord personally accepts his offerings. <laughs> so he does. He accepts them. As soon as he takes them, he goes. He doesn't stay around. So, you know, it, it's a little misleading. But the, the, this king in the southern region was saying, that he accepts the offering, he's personally there to accept the offerings of Indra. Mm -hmm. So he does, but as soon as he gets offering, okay, thank you, I'm going. <laughs> and so in this way, uh, we're hearing about Lord Indra, that Lord Indra is saying that actually, I'm not the greatest devotee. I didn't get the greatest mercy from the Lord. Uh, he said, he said, after I make offerings to the Lord, I will offer him the argya and, and we're very, we're very grateful to him for accepting our offering. But then he says to us, he said, whenever I am not here to accept your offerings, you can worship Brahma or Shiva instead. Indeed, some of them are not different from me. So this is not pleasing to Indra either, to hear that we have to worship Brahma and Shiva. They're not different from Lord, Lord Krishna. Indra finds that difficult to accept because he's thinking, the Supreme Lord, Narayan, Vishnu, Krishna, they're, they're on this highest level. They're the Supreme God, right? Even Lord Shiva had said, Aradhanam Sarvesham Vishnur Aradhanam Param, that the worship of Lord Shiva is the Supreme. So, you know, the Lord is telling me I should, I should offer to Brahma, Shiva, Mm, it's not very pleasing to him. The three deities, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, are embodiments of the Supreme Being. And then Lord Vamanadev says to Indra, he said, have you forgotten this? So, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, they are all Brahman, but still there's a difference. Just like in the Brahma Samhita, we learn the position of Lord Shiva. Right? Sri Ramyata Dadi Vikara Vishesha 
संजायते नितापृतगस्तेमुपैति Lord Brahma says that Lord Shiva is like yogurt and Lord Vishnu is like milk. So milk can be made into yogurt, but yogurt never becomes milk. So Lord Shiva is not on the same level as Lord Vishnu, but he's almost Vishnu, right? Vishnu becomes Shiva. Shiva never becomes Vishnu, though. So this is the, the position. And Lord Brahma, he is a jiva. He is a living entity. And he he also has a long life, but he is a living entity. He is a jiva. He is not God. Shiva is like God of this world. And Vishnu, Krishna, they are God of the Paravyom, the spiritual world. But Brahma, four-headed Brahma. Well, there are many Brahmas. There's a Brahma in every universe. In our universe, we are in a small universe, so we only have a four-headed Brahma. But there are other universes where Brahma has many, many heads. So, Brahma and Shiva are not really on the same level. So this. The, The idea of worshiping Brahma and Shiva as being representatives of Vishnu is not very pleasing to Indra. He says. He says, he says also. He said we cannot be certain where he lives. His abode is unapproachable, difficult for even sages to attain. Sometimes he is in Vaikuntha. Sometimes. On Dhruva's planet, and sometimes within the ocean of milk. <laughs> so you can understand it's very difficult to approach the uh, the Supreme Lord. The, the Supreme Lord, you don't know where he lives. Well, you you know where he lives, but it's not easy to go there where he's living. Sometimes he's in Vaikuntha. Sometimes he's in Dhruva Loka. And sometimes he's in the ocean of milk there, sweet and sweet. So how to find him? You just have to wait for him to come, for him to appear. You can't just go and look for him. So Narada might say, "Then why don't you join your Lord?" He may say, "You know, because Indra is saying like that." So. So Narada Muni may think to Indra, "Why don't you just go and join with him? You know where he is, or you know where he might be. Why don't you go and find him?" But Indra answers that he's not sure where he can find him. He might have to, he has to go everywhere looking for him. He might be in Vaikuntha, beyond the material world, or else on the Vaikuntha planet. Within the universe is one planet which is called Rama Priya, and within that, that's also a Vaikuntha planet within the universe. So he might be there, and he might be at Dhruva's planet, which is known as Vishnu Pada, or he may be at Sweta Dweep, the island of Sweta Dweep in the Milk Ocean. He could be in any of these places. Now he's in Dwarka. But even about this, there is no certainty. Sometimes he goes from there to the house of the Pandavas, and sometimes to Mathura. Hmm. So Lord Krishna is, you know, he has his family there in Dwarka. He married many queens, sixteen thousand one hundred queens, and they were all living there in Dwarka. And Krishna had his family, and all the Yadu dynasty were there in Dwarka. But Krishna doesn't always just stay in Dwarka. We know him. He came to Hastin. He came to Kurukshetra for the battle of Kurukshetra, and he comes also. He went to Kurukshetra when there was a solar eclipse. He came with all the queens to perform the sacrifice during the solar eclipse. 
And sometimes he will come to visit the Pandavas in Hastinapur. And sometimes he will even go to Vrindavan to see the people in Vrindavan. So you don't know where Krishna is going to be. He, he likes to move around. In Mathura, sometimes he's in the city, the city of Mathura, and sometimes he's in the forests of Vrindavan, or he'll go to Goku, and this way he'll move through the different forests. So it's difficult to see him because Lord Krishna grew up in Gokula, and he would go through the 12 forests there in Braja, he would enjoy with the cowherd boys bringing the cows. So sometimes, you know, you like to grow up. When you grow up, you like to go back to your childhood places to see the places where you had enjoyed your childhood. So Krishna is doing like that. He's going back to Vrindavan and seeing the places where he used to take the cows every day. So you don't know. If he's in the forest of Vrindavan, how will you find him? You know, so many forests, difficult to. So Indra should be able to see Krishna very easily. But Krishna is not so easy to, to be seen. Narada Muni had one time, he had also come there to Indra. He came to ask Indra to give a parijata flower for Queen Rukmini. Oh, for Queen Satyabhama. Queen Rukmini already had one. Narada Muni had given a flower to Rukmini because Rukmini, well, she was the first wife of Lord Krishna. So Narada Muni gave her parijata flower. And so Satyabhama was envious of that. So Lord Krishna asked Narada Muni, can you go to the heavenly planets and get a parijata flower for Queen Satyabhama? But Indra didn't want to give one. So then Lord Krishna had to come himself and take the parijata tree and bring it to Dwarka. So, when, when this happened, Indra accused Krishna that he's under the control of his wife. That because Satyabhama wants a parijata tree, that's why Krishna came there to take. So he said, did you see Krishna's hand pecked? He's under the control of his wife, Satyabhama. So this was Indra's offense. You see, he's offensive to Krishna. Actually, Krishna took the, the flower just to show Indra that he's the Supreme Lord, that everything belongs to him. It doesn't belong to Indra. Indra is thinking, it's mine, I'm the king of heaven. But he was forgetting that Lord Krishna is the Lord of all the three worlds. All the, the Lord of the whole creation is Krishna's property. And when Krishna wants something, he can take it. He doesn't have to ask Indra. But Indra was so foolish, he fought with Krishna. And Krishna defeated him, of course. And not only defeated him, he destroyed his Amaravati. <laughs> and so Indra was defeated. So he had, Indra had some little bit grudge against Krishna. That he took away my parijata tree. Well, he took away his parijata tree. He thought his parijata tree. He didn't understand everything belongs to Krishna. So then Indra says, Your own father, Lord Brahma, he's telling Narada Muni, he said, he said, Your own father. He is actually the person who got the greatest favor of the Lord. 
he is directly the son of Lord Vishnu. He was born from Lord Vishnu. So Lord Brahma, who is the father of Narada Muni, he is actually the person who got the greatest mercy from the Lord. And we're going to hear why Indra says like this about Brahma. He says, first of all, he says, uh, the four Kumaras are senior to Narada by birth. And there are many sons of Brahma. Narada, however, is senior because of his pure devotion. Narada, of course, he's the one who's always preaching bhakti yoga. The four Kumaras, they're also devotees, but they're more attached to the impersonal Brahman. But Lord Brahma, he was the, the son of the Supreme Lord. And then another, the, the one day of Brahma, in one day of Brahma, there are 14 Indras. Just as there are 14 Manus, there are 14 Indras in one day of Lord Brahma's time. And not only 14 Manus, 14 Indras, but all the demigods, they also change position 14 times. Every time there's a manvan change in the manvantaras, then all the demigods are also changed. And Brahma's night is the same duration. And Brahma lives for a hundred years. One day of Brahma is 1,000 Divya Yugas. And so in that 1,000 Divya Yugas, you get 14 Manus, which means 71 Divya Yugas for each Manu. And then for Indras also, there's 14 Indras in one day of Brahma. So Indra also lives 71 Divya Yugas. But 71 Divya Yugas, although it seems like a long time for us, it's only a portion of a day of Brahma. It's like one fourteenth of Brahma's time, the daytime, right? Brahma's time, 12 hours. You could say 12 hours daytime. And so there's 14 Manus in the 12 hours of the daytime. So not even one hour of Brahma's time. Hmm? Just imagine, this is the duration of Brahma's life. And Indra's life is just not even one hour of a day of Brahma's time. And Lord Brahma, of course, being Lord Brahma, his life is only one breath of Mahavishnu. Mahavishnu's breath. So Brahma lives for a hundred years. And then some more things about Brahma. Well, he is, he is given the power to do the secondary part of the creation. The initial creation is done by the Lord himself. And Brahma does the secondary part of creation. He has to put the planets into their pro proper position. And he also has to create the different bodies of the living entities. He is the world's chief protector, the dispenser of the fruits of karma. And at the onset of his night, the destroyer of the world. So there's a partial destruction at the end of Brahma's day. Partial destruction. The higher planets remain, upper planets, but the lower planets are all destroyed in the 
in the course of at the end of Brahma's day. Then at the end of Brahma's life, then there's a total annihilation. And everything enters into the body of Mahavishnu. So Brahma, very powerful. And now another thing about Lord Brahma is that on his planet resides the Mahapurush. The Mahapurusha resides there. His 1,000 headed form, the Lord is directly visible on Brahma's planet. And he personally accepts all the obeisances offered him. And he's always giving delight to his devotees. So the Mahapurusha, this is uh, like Mahavishnu. He's residing there. It's described that Lord Brahma was meditating from his lotus flower. And at one point, he was actually able to see the form of Lord Vishnu. And so he begged Lord Vishnu, please come and reside on my planet. So it happened that the Mahavishnu, the form of the Mahapurusha, which is thousand heads, thousand arms, thousand legs, thousands of ears and eyes and everything. You know, he's residing there on the planet of Lord Brahma. And he's constantly accepting all the different offerings which come to him. Many different offerings are being made. And the Mahaparush is there accepting all of these offerings. So Brahma planet, Brahma's planet is right at the top of the universe, Satya Loka. Satya Loka is far above the heavenly planets. Swarga Loka, above Swarga Loka, you've got uh, Mahaloka, Jana Loka, Tapa Loka, and then Satya Loka at the very top of the universe. So this is where Lord Brahma lives and Mahaparusha is there. So there are many uh, devotees also there with Lord Brahma and they're, they reside there on that Satya Loka serving him and arranging for the pleasure of the Mahaparusha. So the Mahaparusha is doing the work of creation. The primary creation is done by the Mahapurusha, the different elements of the material nature, the different senses and all of these different things, all these different parts, the elements, you know, earth, water, fire, air, ether, all of this, the subtle body, the mind, intelligence, ego, the 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 uh, knowledge the working senses like the 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 legs and the hands and the tongue and the evacuating organ and the creating or generating organ procreating organ these things this is all done by the mahapurusha he is responsible for the primary creation Brahma is like the engineer. You know, engineer take the parts, put them together, right? You go and buy the parts and put them together. You can make yourself a computer. You can make your own computer, buy all the parts, put it together. In the same way, Brahma is like that, an engineer. He's creating the bodies of the living entity. But it's a Mahaparusha who's doing the primary work of the creation. And so he's residing there on Satya Loka. And on Satya Loka, he's receiving all the different offerings which are given to him. So the Mahapurusha, of course, expands himself into different forms, like there's the Garbhodaka Shayu Vishnu, 
Shiro Dakashai Vishnu, Shiro Dakashai Vishnu is the super soul in the hearts of all living entities. And the Garbo Dakashai Vishnu is the, uh, in the universe, he's the, the source of the birth of Brahma because the lotus flower comes from the navel of Garbo Dakshai Vishnu and Brahma takes his birth from that lotus flower. And so these are the different Purushas. The original Purusha, this Maha Purusha resides there on Satya Loka. Uh, the Mahaparusha is also the source of the different expansions, the different incarnations which appear in each universe. We know there are different incarnations of the Lord coming. Dambhavami uh, Yuge Yuge, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, in every Yuga, so many different incarnations come. There are Lila avatars, there's Yuga avatars, there's Shak Shaktavesha avatars, there's Guna avatars, and like so many different incarnations of the Lord are there. They generally come from, from the Mahapurusha. They're all expanded. Now the Mahapurusha himself, he comes from Lord Krishna. And sometimes he enters into the form of Lord Krishna because Lord Krishna is not avatar. He is avatar E. He's the origin of all avatars. Now this point is often not understood. People often consider that, oh, Vishnu, he is the super, he's the origin of it because there are other sampradayas, you know, and like that, like in the, the Sri Vaishnavas, you know, they accept Vishnu as being the supreme and they think of Krishna as being the avatar of Vishnu. Indeed, I remember when I first became a devotee, I looked up the word Krishna in my English dictionary. And it said the eighth avatar of Lord Vishnu. <laughs> and I was puzzled and I thought, oh. <laughs> and anyway, then uh, I was reading Prabhupada's books and, and it said, generally, you know, the Lord comes, Krishna comes in every age, but the particular Krishna who came just 5,000 years ago, he was not avatar, but the Krishna who came 5,000 years ago was Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna. He was the avatari. Lord Brahma describes the process. Departure eva hi dasantara mabhupaitya, dipayate vibrita he tu samanata. Like I said, the light of one candle can be lit, can light many other candles. Now the heat and the light and each candle may be the same, but still there's one original candle which lights the other candles. And that original candle is Lord Sri Krishna. He is the Bhagavan Swayam. And Mahavishnu, the Mahaparusha, he has his origin in Lord Krishna. And sometimes the Mahapurusha will enter into the body of Lord Krishna. So sometimes you may go to Satyaloka, you may find there's no Mahapurusha. <laughs> Where did he go? Well, he's going to see Lord Krishna. He entered into Lord Krishna. Sometimes like that for different pastimes. Just like at the birth of Krishna, when Krish Lord Krishna appeared in this world, we know that Vasudeva and Devaki gave birth to Krishna in Mathura. 
So the child who was born to Vasudev and Devaki, this was Vasudev Krishna. But at the same time, Vasudev and Devaki, or Devaki was delivering her child. She was in the prison house of Kamsa in Mathura. But at the same time, in Goku, the wife of Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yashoda, was also delivering a child. And she actually delivered two children. One was Subhadra and one was Shamsundar Krishna. Now, Vasudev, it was arranged by the power of Yoga Maya, Vasudev was able to come out of the prison house of Kamsa and bring this uh, Vasudev Krishna. Vasudev Krishna originally appeared in the forearm form beautifully decorated as Lord Narayan. But at the, quest, at the request of Vasudev, the child transformed himself into the form of a baby. And then Vasudev then carried the baby out of the prison of Kamsa, across the Yamuna River to go cool to the home of Nanda Maharaj. And there he, he exchanged his child, the Vasudev Krishna, and took the baby girl who Mother Yashoda had delivered. Now, at the time he gave Vasudev Krishna, that Vasudev Krishna form entered into the Shamsundar form of Krishna. So the two Krishnas became one because the original form is Shamsundar Krishna. The Vasudev Krishna form entered into the Shamsundar Krishna form. Right? Shamsundar Krishna is the flute playing Krishna. And Vasudev Krishna is the four arm form, Narayan, like that. You see different forms. Krishna in Vrindavan is Shamsundar Krishna. But Krishna outside of Vrindavan, like in Mathura and Dwarka, you see that's Vasudev Krishna. Krishna at Kurukshetra, generally that's Vasudev Krishna. But uh, we should understand the original form of Krishna is Shamsundar Krishna. And when different demons have to be killed, the job of killing the demons, that is done by Vasudev Krishna. And it's Shamsundar Krishna who is giving pleasure to the, go the gopis. <coughs> oh, Krishna. Okay, so uh, we have to understand the same way Mahavishnu, the Mahapurusha, he is one of the forms of Lord Krishna, one of the forms which come from Lord Krishna. And he sometimes enters back into that form. Although we living entities at the time of annihilation, we enter into the form of Mahavishnu, Mahavishnu, he enters into the form of Lord Krishna. Okay. Mm. And you can, you, we also remember there's that pastime described in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, when the Brahmana came to Dwarka. And the Brahmana was residing in Dwarka, and the Brahmana's wife was having a miscarriage. Time after time, the Brahmana's wife miscarried. She couldn't deliver her child. So the Brahmana came to the king of Dwarka, who was Ugrasena, to complain. And at that time, Lord Krishna was there with Arjuna. And the Brahmana was complaining that you Kshatriyas, you're not doing your job. You're supposed to protect my child. My wife was delivering a child and somehow the child has disappeared, gone, miscarriage. So you Kshatriyas are supposed to protect. You're supposed to give protection. 
what just imagine the, how perfect the vedic system was that if somebody was going to give birth to a child the, the child would be protected by the kshatriya kings nowadays you see what happens today people go for abortions and things they kill the child but previously nobody would ever think of killing the child they're happy they want children so anyway the brahmana came there to dwarka complaining that, you know my wife has miscarried so many times so then arjuna was present and he vowed that next time your wife delivers next <clears throat> next time your wife delivers a child i will be there and i will protect her no harm will come to your child and if i cannot protect her i will give up my life arjuna vowed and so that happened when the wife when his wife again conceived the child and she's ready to deliver a child but again just at the time of the birth somehow the, there was a miscarriage and so the brahmana was livid that you kshatriyas you told me you would protect now look what happened she had a miscarriage again so arjuna was in difficulty because he vowed to give up his life if he could not protect her so lord krishna happened to be there so lord krishna said you come with me let's go out we'll go and find this child what happened to the child so lord krishna took his chariot with arjuna on it and they went out of the covering of the universe they went beyond the universe and they went into the kashyo ocean the karana ocean karana ocean the kashyo ocean and within the kashyo ocean they found maha vishnu there the maha vishnu maha vishnu maharusha was there in the kashyo ocean and not only was he there but all the children of the brahmana were also there maha vishnu had taken all these children away why had he done that he wanted to see lord krishna he wanted that lord krishna and arjuna would come there to see him so this is the uh something of the attractive nature of lord krishna that even maha vishnu desires to have the darshan of lord krishna so lord krishna is the original supreme personality of godhead and all others they all have their origin in lord krishna oh so when when lord krishna appears on earth when the supreme lord appears here on earth at that time maha vishnu enters into the body of lord krishna but the commentators point out that this is not a very long time because lord krishna is only manifest on this planet for 120 years is it how many years did lord krishna perform his pastimes on this plan what 125 years like it so that's not a very long time for brahma <laughs> right one moment was one year so 120 125 moments on brahma's planet and that's where mahavishnu is residing performing his activity So Indra said, I could give you thousands of other reasons why Brahma is the real object of Krishna's mercy. But it's there, it's both in the Shruti and in the Smriti. You should be familiar with other aspects of Brahma's greatness and the greatness of the residents of his planet. So all the people on the planet of Lord Brahma they're all very great souls and they're just waiting for the end of Brahma's life for the annihilation of the universe and at that time they will go back to Godhead. So many scriptures all declare the glories of Lord Brahma.
So when Narada Muni heard these words, then Narada Muni is very excited. He said, well, I will have to go to Brahma's planet. I want to go there and see him. So Narada Muni, by his mystic power, he's off and he goes off to Satyaloka. And he comes there into the planet of Brahma. And when Narada reached there, from a distance, he could hear the huge sound of the many great sacrifices performed. And the sacrifices were going on continuously with great devotion by the sage, all the great sages on Brahma Loka. They were all performing great sacrifices, yagyas, you know, chanting all the mantras. Om Sahasra Sirsya Parashrusa, like that. They were chanting Purusha Shukta and all the mantras and the offering all the articles. And then he saw among the sages, he saw there was a Supreme Lord in the form of the Mahaparush. And the Mahaparush was very satisfied. He was decorated with crowns of matted locks. With this 1,000 headed form, he had, a, he had appeared there with his consort just to accept the offerings and to delight his worshippers. So the Mahapurusha is the originator of sacrifices and he is there, he is the presiding deity described in the Purusha Shukta of the Rig Veda. At the beginning of creation, the first sacrifice in the universe was performed. And for this sacrifice, Lord Mahapurush provided the sacrificial ingredients from his own body. And the Lord reveals himself in this form of Brahmaloka, not simply to take his offerings, but to please his devotees, he enjoys personally distributing the results of sacrifice. To enliven Lord Brahma, the Mahapurusha consumed all the items offered him, placing them into his 1,000 mouths with his 1,000 hands. After awarding the performers of the sacrifice, the benedictions they desired, Lord Mahapurush went to his sleeping quarters. As the goddess Lakshmi massaged his feet, he entered his pastime of sleep. Right? This is Yoga Nidra. So, the Lord also enjoyed taking rest, to relieve, to relieve the worshippers of any doubt as to whether he was enjoying the oblations. Lord Mahapurush ate all the oblations with relish and without hesitation. And when the offerings were finished, then the Lord blessed the sages with benediction, fulfilled all their desires. Lord Mahapurush and the goddess of fortune then go to their private quarters. At that time, he was no longer visible to the residents of Brahma Loka. So there are two principal pastimes of the Mahapurusha in Brahma Loka. First of all, his accepting the sacrifice, and secondly, his sleeping. <laughs> And they're both described in the Vaishampayana, they're described by Vaishampayana Rishi in the Mahabharata at the end of the account of the killing of Kala Nimi. There it is said that he saw the Lord in yet another of his forms, consuming his share 
of the ablations of ghee offered in sacrifice by great sages. The thousand-headed Lord, his heads covered with matted locks, entered that room and lay down to sleep. Please don't touch it. Can you just sit down and leave it alone? So this is also described in the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's described at the end of Dwapara Yuga, Lord Brahma and the other demigods, on the request of Bhumi, they approach Lord Vishnu on Sweta Dweep from the shore of the milk ocean. So we may Somebody, we may ask the question, why do they need to travel to Sweta Dweep if Lord Vishnu is present in Brahma's own domain? Lord Vishnu is already there in, in Tatyaloka. So why do they need to go to Sweta Dweep? So you could say this journey was not really necessary, but during some days of Brahma, the pastime of Lord Krishna to descend comes like that. During other days of Brahma, Lord Vishnu is approached on Brahma Loka itself. But Sanatana Goswami suggests that Brahma and the others may have gone to Sweta Dweep because they felt reluctant to disturb Lord Mahaparusha's privacy while he was enjoying his sleep. Or another reason, Brahma may have calculated that if Lord Mahaparush were to descend to earth at his request, Brahma Loka would be without his presence for the duration of the avatar. It would be best, therefore, to go to the milk ocean and ask Lord Vishnu to become the avatar. In any case, when Lord Krishna descends, all the expansions of Godhead appear with him, within him, including the Mahapurush and the Lord of Sweta Dweep. So to say that Krishna descends through one form of Vishnu or another doesn't make much difference. Krishna alone is the ultimate source of all avatars. So this point, the same point which I've been speaking about is being made here, that Krishna is not just avatar, but he is avatari. And all the expansions, all of these different forms, the Lord of Sweta Dweep, the Mahapurusha, and so on, they're all there within the body of Lord Krishna. And they, they all enter, when Lord Krishna appears on this earth planet, all of these different forms enter into his body. So at the Lord's request, Brahma then instructed his sons to continue the sacrifice while he, he went to his own court to deliberate on the management of the universe. So Brahma has to oversee the universe. He's in, involved in maintaining also the universe, not just only creating. Brahma also gets involved in maintaining. So before Mahavishnu went to his quarters, he asked Brahma to turn the sacrifice over to his sons. So Brahma's sons are also authorities of Vedic sacrifice. Brahma is the first Vedic priest 
and then he's followed by his sons who teach the method of sacrifice to the people of the universe. So Narada Muni's come there and he's going to begin praising Lord Brahma. All right, we will go on tomorrow and we'll hear tomorrow morning about how Brahma praises, how Narada praises Brahma. Are there any questions? Thanks for the wonderful uh, lecture. Marat, this uh, Dhruvalok and uh, Shwetadeep, uh -huh. are these uh, coming under the spiritual uh, realm or how is it? Uh, or it's part of material? They're spiritual planets uh -huh. within the universe. Uh -huh. They're not annihilated. Uh -huh. And what happens to them, like when there's a devastation or at the end of the life of Brahma, where there's an annihilation, then they just become unmanifest, but they're still there, but they're just unmanifest. And then when again creation comes, then they become manifest again. Living entities also will be there. Uh, that, uh, they'll have their... Uh, uh, well, like and... Dhruva Maharaj, he's there on the planet of Dhruva Loka. I think he's only there till the end of the life of Brahma, till the end of the the time of the end of Brahma's life, and then at that time, then Dhruva Maharaj can go back to God. Then. Another uh, aspect uh, you mentioned about the Mahapurush. Now, Mahapurush uh, is the one who uh, who originates, you know, the various incarnations, especially the uh, Leela and the Gunavatar. So, uh, is it? Um, uh, uh, is it is it different uh, from uh, Mahavishnu uh, or or is it the same? No, that's Mahavishnu. Ah, okay. Mahaparush means Mahavishnu. Mahav okay. Yes. Okay. So all the lila avatars and guna avatars comes through. Yes. This form of. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the different avatars generally come from Shirodaka Shai Vishnu, Shirodaka Shai Vishnu, Garbhadaka Vishnu, Mahavishnu, Purusha avatars. They're all Vishnu. You know, they're all the Mahaparush different places he appears different functions but it's the same personality right. just doing these different tasks right. so when the different avatars come they come through the vishnu so Thank, thanks for it. they were describing uh, that they wanted to get the the lord to come so they went to Sweta Dweep. They went to the shore of Sweta Dweep to pray to the Lord at Sweta Dweep. You know, 5,000 years ago, prior to the birth of Lord Krishna, Mother Earth was overwhelmed because of the die, because of the demonic kings. All the demonic kings were burdening her planet. So she appealed to Lord Brahma to help her. And they, Brahma and all the demigods, they all went to the shore of the milk ocean and they prayed to the Lord in Sweta Dweep. Now the question was raised here by Sanatana Goswami, why did they go there? Why didn't they just go to Brahmaloka? Because the Mahavishnu is residing there on Brahmaloka. <laughs> so they're discussing, you know, that, well, they didn't want to take the Lord away and <laughs> they thought, he may be resting there, maybe he's resting and up in such a loka. And so they they pray to him at huh? Shweta. Yeah. They prefer to go to Sweta Dweep <laughs> rather than disturb him. <laughs> so they they went there and they got the Lord to come. The Lord said, I'm going to come in the family of the Yadu dynasty. All you demigods go and take your birth, and I'm also going to come there. And so that's what happened. The original Supreme Lord came himself, not just some avatar, but actually the original primeval Lord. The Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna came and took his, appeared there.
well, you could say the Yadu family of the Yadu dynasty, that was Vasudev Krishna. But actually, Nan, uh, Shamsundar Krishna, he came in, in the family of Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yashoda. It's also like the Yadu dynasty. They're like friends, you know, very close to each other. And so he appears in Braja to enjoy his pastimes there. But the work of the other Leela, the Dwarka Leela and uh, Mathura Leela, this is Vasudev Krishna. Samsundar Krishna, he stays in Braja, never leaves Braja. But sometimes he's manifest and usually he's not. To most of us, he's not manifest, but actually Krishna is still there in Braja. So those who are pure hearted souls, they can see Krishna there in Braja. Sometimes they say Krishna hid himself in the hearts of the gopis. <laughs> That's why you, you don't see him. But the killing of all the demons, that was done by Vasudev Krishna. So, Jamsundar Krishna just gives pleasure to the devotees. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so we will stop here. Thank you.